Okay, we're going to tie a bend back. This is a good general purpose flats fly, good for uh, bones, good for reds. But you notice the, the shape of this hook is a, a little odd. It's sitting here in the vise with the point up. And uh, the eye points out straight. And now you look at this hook and it's not the same shape. And that's because the first step with these flies is bending the hook. You can actually buy a hook that's designed for these, but most people just take a regular 34007 and bend it like this. But they use a pair of pliers instead of their jaws or their vise. And that uh, is not quite enough bend. I'll tweak this a little more and see what we get. And, and that's a little too much bend. What Normally what people do is something in between these two extremes. However, you certainly can tie it and fish it with the bend like it is. And I'm going to. And if somebody says, geez, that's more of a bend than I put in mind, I, I just look at them and say, well, I tie them with this much bend because I get better hookups, I think. <laughs> Who's to say? Uh, anyway, this will work fine. And one of the first things you want to do if you want this to get down to the bottom and be able to jump it along the bottom in a sand flats is to put just a little bit of weight on it. And it also helps assure that the fly rides upside down like it's being tied. Uh, it's just easier on the flats. You hang up a lot less if you uh, can, uh, can tie it this way. Now I'm going to wrap back over this lead. It, because I'm using fine lead here instead of medium lead wires, lead free wire really. And uh, if you got fine wire you just put some extra on. And I'm going to use a pair of old scissors here to cut the ends of this off because it's hard to get in there and pinch it off uh, with the hook in this position in the vise. Once I get these ends flattened down and uh, I think everything's okay there I'll hunt up my yellow thread here and and we'll get this thread started on here and get tying this fly. It's a relatively simple fly and it goes fairly quick. You bring this uh, thread in, just start it up above and build something of a taper to get up onto that uh, lead. We'll cut this tag off and then just build a taper on both ends of the uh, lead free wire. And it takes a few wraps when you got a double thickness like that but uh, Transition down to the other end, push that lead together to make sure it's tightly uh, packed. And uh, build a ramp down on this end too, which of course, whoops, there we go. Can't get used to that hook point being up in the air, it's supposed to be down. And a few wraps here at the uh, step, whoop, there we go again. To build something of a smooth taper up onto this lead free wire. And we'll build it up a little more on the other side here. Now a lot of people will, after they do this, before they tie the chenille on, they'll actually coat this section of hook with uh, head cement so that they wrap the chenille right into the head cement. I'm not going to do that. It, it's a little messy and you have to wait for it to dry and stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and tie my chenille in down here. Trap that core. And uh, I can't get used to that point being up there. Okay, uh, trap that core and then bring my thread up above. And you don't want to end it there. What you want to do is wrap up over the bend and leave your thread up here. That's where you're going to tie off that uh, chenille body. Now I'm just going to wrap this hand over hand instead of rotating the hook. Uh, it's hard with this type of bend and axis to wrap while rotating. And remember now if I had cemented this I'd be seating this chenille right into cement which would certainly improve the durability of this fly. Now you got to be careful here uh, when you're wrapping up like this. Sometimes, especially if you give it a little slack, the, the chenille will slip. This is holding up pretty good. Oh, yep, I gave it some slack and there it goes. Uh, so you just unwrap and, and, uh, and uh, keep on going. I'm just wrap out here and get a little base on this and pull that good and tight. There we go. And I'm up over the bend, and I want to go ahead and tie it off. Now once you tie this off, uh, the rest of the tying for the whole pattern takes place right up here in this little flat area that you've created. And uh, it goes quite quickly from here on out. Be 
Make sure that's seated down good. And the first uh, material that we put on is a bucktail, uh, a yellow bucktail. So here's a, a little clump of it. Lay that on there and measure it. I want it to be a little longer than the bend of the hook, and that's kind of a light clump. I'm going to grab a few more hairs here. Uh, I, I'd like them to be sparse, but not that sparse. However, you know, on any given day, a real sparse tie is apt to outfish the thicker tie. You, you never know for sure, but that's more like the size clump I'd like to see. And uh, the yellow, this is kind of a chartreuse yellow. I should have used a more yellow yellow so it would contrast better uh, with the chartreuse I'm going to put on top of it in a minute. But uh, this is basically a yellow bucktail and just one small clump, and I fasten it on the whole length of that flat spot so it's very secure and uh, on top of that yellow I want to put some chartreuse so I grab a clump of that about the same size bunch of hair and uh, bring that up and uh, these ends aren't quite as even as I'd like to see. So I'm going to do what they call finger stack, and I just grab the tips, pull the shorter hairs away from it, put the tips up, uh, pull some of the shorter ones out again, and put those tips up even with the other ones, and just do that a couple more times, and I've got all the hairs pretty much uh, in reasonably close to even. So there's about the same size clump, and I'm afraid on the film it doesn't, they don't look like they're contrasting colors, but one, the bottom one is yellow and the upper one is chartreuse. Uh, it's just a trick of the studio light. Now with that ready, I'm going to go ahead and fasten it in. And again, you want to fasten it right on top of the hook. And I'll rotate here so I can check and make sure that it wasn't quite straight, but it is now. The beauty of being able to turn and look at it. You know, bind this down well. You you want to make sure these are good tight wraps. You don't want this hair slipping out from underneath here. And uh, it takes a lot of abuse, so you want to make sure it's on there good and tight. And you notice how the point kind of gets buried in this wing. And uh, and that's the way you want it. Uh, matter of fact, we're going to bury it even more. You look, you see it's down in there. And uh, we're going to bury it even more by putting hackle. Uh, I'm, I use a saddle hackle, or actually neck hackle that's uh, a, a streamer neck. And you take a neck like this and you've got a whole size range of hackles from real small stuff at the bottom to long stuff. And I just kind of bend this and, and hold it in place and say, yeah, that's about the right length. That's the size feather I want. Then I can pull that neck away and grab two of these. And I'm going to mount these opposing each other. And I'm going to mount one on the far side and one on the close side. You see how the curves, uh, the tips come together? One's going to go on the back side and one on the close side of the fly. So I judge about what I want my length to be and prep these hackles by tearing all the fibers off the bottom section of the quill. And there you go. There's a prepared one and the other one to go with it. And again, you can see how I'm, I'm mounting them so the tips come together. So I'm just going to place one on the back side over here. Turn this so I can see what I'm doing. Take advantage of that rotary feature so you can see. And I lay one on both sides. Make sure it envelops this this. Uh, bucktail in the back. Lay my stems in place. A couple of light wraps around this. Nothing too tight. Then I can turn it and look and adjust the angle if I need to of my hackles. That one needs to be tweaked just a hair. There you go. And that's where I want them. So now I'll just bind them down good and tight. One quick look to make sure it's good on the back side. And there we go. These nice tight wraps. Still holding it in place with my thumb and forefinger. I cut off the excess quill and finish tightening them down. We don't have a lot of steps left on this fly as far as tying it, then we're going to put the eyes and the epoxy head on, but uh, now we just want to throw some uh, flashaboo in here. Make sure those are okay and see how that envelops that whole wing, kind of hides the point a little more. If I hadn't bent quite so sharp an angle it would hide it even better. So here's the flashaboo. You only need four or five strands of it, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to use the pinpoint technique of wrapping this around my thread and then tightening it down. 
So I bring this and wrap it around the thread and I make sure that uh, as I wrap it around the thread like this that I don't do it in the middle. I want the ends to be uh, different lengths. Whoops. That thread back. There we go. So I got it wrapped around. I just bring it down, let it slide down the thread and place it right on top. Lift it up just a little more. There we go. Right in the center. Right between those two wings I just mounted. And then you see what I mean about the ends being different lengths. See these stop back here and then the others go on past to the end of the wing. And, and the different end points actually helps add quite a bit of flash without having to add a lot of extra material. Now we need a peacock hurl topping on this. And uh, very simple uh, uh, just you know just take four or five strands cut the ends off and tie it right straight on top of that uh, flashaboo and uh, and you've got the topping that you want. Tighten that down good. And uh, now we just got to build up a big enough head to be able to stick the eyes on. And one of the reasons you use small adhesive eyes on this fly is that the smaller ones will stick on the side if you try to use a larger, the medium or the large size eyes. They just, they would go right around and overlap each other. And well, they just won't stick on and and fold enough to to make the contour of the head. So kind of smooth this up so the adhesive on the back of the fly has something to grab to. Uh, excuse me, the adhesive on the back of the eye has something to grab to. And once you get it smoothed up, you're just going to tie a whip finish knot and uh, stick those eyes on and coat the whole thing with some epoxy. So get all the lint and stuff off this thread and kind of flatten it out a little bit by stroking it like that and take my whip finish tool tie this thing off and see if we can find some eyes to stick on this thing you can tie this in an assortment of colors you don't have to stay with this color by any means okay so there it is Looks about right. Everything's okay. So, uh, yeah, I guess it's time for the eyes and epoxy. Now, what we're going to use for eyes on this thing are uh, these stick-on eyes. They come on a clear backing, and and you just peel them off. And I got one stuck on my point of my scissors here to to uh, put on this side, and kind of pinch it on there and uh, grab the other one stick it on the point of my scissors and uh, bring it up into place right here and just roll over and uh, there you go that's about in the same place as what the other one is and pinch it on you can see these don't like to wrap around don't like to stick especially good but they will eventually grab enough and uh, then you got to mix up some five minute epoxy and, and put the epoxy on them. Now when I get these so I think they've grabbed enough here and I mix up my epoxy I'll tell you I, I, normally I'm not doing this in my vise like this. I take the fly out and I have a bunch of them ready to go and I have my epoxy head dryer turning and then I've got all these flies laid out or stuck in a piece of foam and I've got some epoxy mixed up and I'll grab these by the bend of the hook and I'll hold them up in my hand and use the other hand to put the epoxy on then I stick them right on the dryer and it smooths a lot of this uh, epoxy out and, and it's nowhere near as much bother or time uh, doesn't consume anywhere near as much time to coat them if you're doing them uh, out of the vise. I'm doing it in here of course so that you can see it. I got some epoxy running down my stick here so I'll do it from the underside of the stick. But you just want to get a good coat. You know make sure you cover those eyes and uh, make sure you get enough on here so it can as you're rotating it can smooth out and uh, spread and cover and fill any of these voids with epoxy. And it looks like there's about enough on there. And then if you don't have a, a an epoxy dryer, then 
you do what I'm going to do here. You sit here for five minutes and you just rotate this thing and turn it and let the epoxy move. And what you can't do is leave it in one place. If you leave it in one place without rotating it, the epoxy just sags and runs down and drips and makes a general mess. So you just stop for a second, let it run a little bit. Let it kind of move towards the bottom, rotate it over, and let it move back the other way, and it helps work it into everything and into all of the voids. And you just sit here and do this. You're done. The fly is finished except for hardening that head, and uh, you just, you got five minutes of rotating like this, or you get the epoxy dryer. But anyway, five minutes later, here you go. Uh, there you have it. There's a uh, bend back, and it's tied using rotary fly tying techniques.